We are talking about Quantum Leap, the reboot, and Shane has all the most current information. What is happening, Shane, with Quantum Leap? This is, I've been waiting, I don't know, 30 years for this. How long has it been? It's been so long. I was a teenager. Oh, when this you were a teenager? Yeah. 93 years. All right. Thank you so much for that. No problem. I'm aging well, if that's the case. Um, Quantum Leap was a fantastic TV series, and it looks as if NBC has ordered a pilot for a reboot. Now, just think of the word pilot there for a second. Pilot tells me we don't know if it's going to be good. That is a little concerning. But let's talk about the exciting stuff, because the fact that they're going to try it all is great. Um, Quantum Leap's long rumored return has taken a big leap forward, no pun intended, uh, becoming a reality. NBC has given a pilot order to reboot of the beloved 1990 sci-fi series, which starred Scott Bakula and Dean Stockwell. Well, I was much older then. I guess I was 18. Wow, I was an old teenager. Okay. Uh, written and written. Oh, what is this? Dean Stockwell. Written and executive produced by La Brea co-showrunner Stephen Lillian and Brian Winbrandt. Um, that's interesting. That looks like it's going to be created by the people doing La Brea, which I saw like one or two episodes of, but didn't keep watching. I saw the whole thing. And what is going on? That show is... Is it weird? That's really not good. It got weird for me. It got to the, uh, the, the only reason I'm continuing watching because that stupid MacGuffin they set up at the beginning of the show, they just haven't paid I, off yet. It, it hasn't? No, and it, oh, but but okay. but the acting's bad, bro. Everything's sort of like not. Very well, these good. are the, these are the guys making it now. I will say there is good news, and that is the original creator Don Belisario is a part of the series. Um, and here's something else that's interesting about it: it takes place current day, so 30 years after Doctor Sam Beckett uh, went into his quantum, quantum leap accelerator and vanished. Okay. So it's taking place in present day, which means uh, because they're going to do it in present day that uh, Scott Bakula can come back and reprise his role in some form. However, it you is- You sold me, I'm in. <laughs> right. Well, the problem is, is that up until this point, uh, he's not attached to reprise his role currently, um, but is aware of what's going on and is having- potential conversations about being involved uh the old money march yeah so yeah it's going to be one of these things now scott bacula not coming back as dr sam beckett would be a ridiculous thing for him not to do yeah. so you here's what i'll tell there's you there's no point in making this without scott bacula 100 percent agree uh now we lost dean stockwell he just died in november at age 85 so of course you know we don't have um we don't have him or we're not, but, but that's fine because uh, I think Ziggy was like a younger Asian girl. Right. So that, that person could come in to support Scott Bakula's character. I, I just think it has to happen where, um, where Scott Bakula has to come back in some way. I mean, they can have a new character. They can have a takeoff person. They can try to maybe leap again in a new way. If you recall the series uh, ran from 89 to 93 um 97 episodes uh and of course he was hopping through his own timeline through his own history and he would hop into people's bodies and have to fix the situation kind of like if you guys ever watched um um highway to heaven where uh michael green well, i can't remember actually yeah he the guy from little house on the prairie um he played an angel it's kind of a similar thing. And we weren't sure if this was like a God thing or what was going on. It's kind of like so, Dr. Quinn medicine woman. No, nothing like that. Although I met Jane Seymour and filmed an episode of Dr. Quinn medicine woman in Puerto Rico, like back in 1990. Okay. We got to talk about that after the show because she was yeah. like my ultimate milk crush when I was a kid. Yeah. I drove a bus for her. Like, um, yeah, it was weird. I drove the whole <laughs> cast and crew back and forth from their hotel to the, Oh man, I was, I was in the Navy at the time. Like yeah. she, she is still significantly beautiful, even in her age. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. She, she aged well. She's a handsome woman. I'm a very, very handsome woman. I handsome woman. Handsome. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, Quantum Leap um, ah, is one of the marquee titles in the Universal TV library. So, 
new streaming service is probably a big reason why this is coming back. Um, I guess it had been kept largely under wraps, but Scott Bakula last fall told Bob Saget, who just passed away, which we haven't talked about, interestingly enough, uh, that there were significant, very significant conversations about a Quantum League reboot. So he is involved in some way, and he's not really doing anything he can't get out of, right? Um, What's he doing? He's doing... Uh, he's a lot of guest star stuff, bro. Yeah. So... A lot of guest star come. stuff. Now, let me tell you what concerns me. The word pilot concerns me. Um, that means that they're not completely sold that it'll work. Um, normally, when you have, like, they're rebooting the series, it used to be a pilot was a new concept that the studio wanted. Okay, we'll order a pilot to see if it's going to work. Right, right. And most pilots never did. Like, one in ten really ever made TV. Yeah, I, I saw a pilot of um, the Justice League <laughs> back in like 2005 with like uh, Aquaman and Green Arrow and Flash and Clark because they didn't own the rights to Superman. So it was just Clark. Oh, wow. wow. And uh, I remember thinking, oh, this is going to be a cool TV show because at the time there was no superhero or anything. So like, yeah. Um, <laughs> but dude, it fell flat on its face. And then. The guy that was playing Aquaman goes on to play Green Arrow in the actual Superman uh, oh. Smallville show. So it was even further confusing. That's interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, so there is like, I would say this is great news and we'll probably do a, um, a big video about this, but um, you know, the fact that it says pilot does make me nervous. And, it, and it, I, what I would tell you is if you're a quantum leap fan, that by no means does this mean like we are getting a full show. Uh, we got to hope that this is good. So we really need to keep our fingers crossed that Scott Bakula is a part of it, at least in the pilot, to give confidence to uh, the people in charge at NBC. Yeah, NBC is making some moves, man. They're trying to. I mean, they have to. They, they got Peacock, which is which has got a lot of interesting things on it. They're their streaming app is terrible and laggy. Dude, the and streaming can't app stand. Is, it's so confusing. I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on live real quick. It's like it's the weirdest thing. So you you open it up and it one the only thing I'll plot them on is at least they at least they're the only streaming app so far that actually shows you what you were already watching. I right. do not know why Hulu, why do you have to scroll down four pages to find out what you were watching? It's the stupidest thing ever, Hulu. But they show it right at the top. But the interface is so bad that you don't even know what episode you're on. You're scrolling over, and the thing is like, like the last one highlights. So like instead of highlighting it, it's like diminishing your selection. It's like I think the idea was, oh, make it seem like they're pressing it with their finger. It's so stupid. Wow. I don't know how many times they hit the wrong episode by accident because it's it's like it's the bad. opposite of how most interfaces work nowadays. And it's delayed. And, it's so, delayed and it has a delay. Yes. It has a delay. It's really, they need to work on that. I mean. And I have that good Roku too. It makes no sense. I mean, NBC has incredible content. I mean, it's arguably probably the best of the three network, of the four network shows, of uh, four network television. It's probably got the most content. We're talking, I mean, you could go on and on cheers. You could talk about you know, the office, it's got everything, all the great shows really have been on NBC. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I think they're doing the office remake thing too. What? Oh, they're going to do it like a reunion show. Like a reunion show or something. Yeah. Steve Carell won't redo the office. He already said, well, I mean, I don't think he'll, I mean, if they ever redo office, it will be a different cast, same concept or something. You know. But yeah, I think it's not far enough removed to be able to do something completely new. It's only been, you know, what, 10 years. Nine years? I don't even know. But I don't know if they can do something new yet. And the problem is, is they wanted to do something, but Steve Carell, he's doing his own thing. You know, Steve Carell's too busy, like, destroying his own career. Yeah. Um, you That's know, true. That's true. it's crazy. We could talk about that once, but. Yeah. Uh, but this is a Quantum Leap thing. So what do you think? Are you are you excited for this? Um, are you intrigued? What do you think? Um, I'm intrigued because I would love to see, so first off, um, I'll watch, I'll watch Scott Bakula read, uh, 
the book of Deuteronomy in the Bible mm. because the guy, I just love that guy so much. Um, but I wasn't a massive fan like Shane is of the original series. It was, it was a show that I would watch, but it was never my first choice. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, you know what? Like DS9 for me. Like a lot of people love DS9. I like DS9, but if you if 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 there was TNG Voyager and DS9 on at the same time, I had to pick which one to watch first. I'm not selecting DS9. Yeah, I think I know why. I think it's it's because of it's very it's a very historical show, right? And so if you weren't old enough to really, and you were younger when it came out, so. Yeah. It, it would have been a show where you had to be aware of like, you know, JFK's assassination and, you know, Martin Luther King this. And, you know, there was a lot of things that it, you probably hadn't even heard of. So you're watching the show where he's bouncing around and you don't understand the historical significance of what he's a part of. It makes it hard to enjoy. But now I believe if you watched it now, if it was, if you could handle 720 or whatever it's not, it is. It's not even 720p. <laughs> Whatever it's in. When, when you, you said that. when you said we'll probably make a video of this, I immediately took my phone out and started googling <laughs> the quality options we have for footage for that. Yeah, bro, it's 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 under four hundred. We're talking about broadcast television in the eighties. Well, yeah, and nineties. Okay, but um, what are you doing to me? What are you doing? I know we're gonna have to figure something out. I get you. you want to kill DVDs. me? You want to kill me? I'm I'll, get I'll, you I'm, I'll die. I'll die trying to upscale that. Yeah. It'd be what? easier if we hired actors and reacted uh, out the entire series, which we might do. I understand atheist for the cause and uh, Hiroshi loves you and Kenneth LaRoque and Jeremy, they all do it for us. Um, but the point is, is something's coming. It's better than nothing. Um, uh, did you see, did you see Alcatraz that was made? By, these guys also made Alcatraz. Oh, I like so, that. I like that show. Did you? Okay, well then, there's some. Did it, why did it stop? So it stopped in like the middle of the season. You remember that? What happened? I don't know. Same with that show, Timeless. That was such a, what a great concept. A lot of these do. Remember Heroes? They do. They do these things. Well, Heroes, at least Heroes had a conclusion. Timeless was a movie about like they invented a time machine, and it was going to be used by you know, basically the deep state or whatever, and they were trying to like go. They were going throughout time to trying to correct uh, correct. The changes that were being made by people that were trying to use the technology uh, to, to change their future for the better, damn the timeline. And um, the 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 dramatic elements were fascinating. Like, I remember the main character, she was very fantastic. She ends up being friends with this woman who then she has to allow, she has to allow her to die at um what's that big giant blimp that what was it called again the one in germany that kind of uh, Hen hindenburg hindenburg mm -hmm. she has to allow this woman to die at the hindenburg even though the previous night she connected so well with her and she's such a and she's like related to her in some way like a distant lake and like she makes this decision not for her own personal reasons but because she knows that if this person doesn't die, then this other person, she's a historian. This person doesn't show up, doesn't write a book, doesn't change. Like the world's not changed for the better. And it's just a great story, but it stopped. It just stopped. No explanation why. You're like, oh, great TV show. And we stopped. Yeah. Well, that seems to be the way a lot of them go. I mean, they don't make it. Whether they're not getting enough views, not enough interest, you know, it's, you can get some intrigue, but if you don't keep it going, you know, hmm. um, but so I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, as soon as we have more information on Quantum Leap, we will definitely be um, you know, be talking about it. So make sure you guys subscribe and, and like this so we can do more yeah. for you. Well, I'm going to leave you guys with this, just so you know. There are two seasons of Timeless and uh, 39 <laughs> seasons of Friends for some reason. I don't know. All right, moving on. That's because most people are shallow. Ain't that the truth. <laughs>